Okay, in this lesson we're going to talk about restricting the domain. And let's start with the sine function. Um, actually, let's start with the cosine. It's just easier. We'll start with the cosine function. Alright, so we're going to look at the circle, and you can think of the quadrants. And at the same time, we are going to look at the graph. And this kind of helps you um, think about it more in a linear relationship. Alright, there is the graph of the cosine. So the idea of restricting the domain is to just cover, um, the way I think of it is I want to get just one set of positive arcs out and one set of negative arcs out. In other words, in quadrant 1 and quadrant 4, the cosines are both positive, so to me that's a duplicate. And in quadrant 2 and in quadrant 3, they're both negative, so that's a duplicate. And to have a have a inverse, we can't have duplication. So the convention is that we're going to restrict the domain from 0 to pi. So that would be quadrant 1, if you like to think about it like like quadrants and quadrant 2. When I look at it on the graph, this is from 0 to 2 pi, and remember pi is right here in the middle, so, and this is positive 1, and this is negative 1 down here, so these are your positive um, cosine values, and these are your negative cosine values. Um, so the cosine is restricted, from 0 to pi. All right, now let's talk about the sine a minute. And when I do this one, you'll see why the cosine maybe was a, just a little easier to start with. So here's the sine. And the sine um, is positive in quadrant 1 and quadrant 2 is positive and it's negative in 3 and 4. So there's duplication there. So the convention is is that we restrict it to quadrant 1 and quadrant 4 and quadrant 4. I'm going to talk specifically about that. Um, you'll see. But this of course goes from 0 to pi over 2 but to get quadrant 4, we go in the opposite direction, negative pi over 2. And look here when I graph it out, and this might help understand it. So here's the sign, and we'll make a whole cycle that's positive, and a whole cycle that's negative. So the quadrant 1, that is from 0 to pi over 2, but see quadrant 4 is way out here, and those aren't attached. Think of it as a continuous thing. So if I go in the negative direction, see here this is negative pi over 2, well then I'm getting that piece. So see it's kind of like quadrant 4 on the circle, but I have to get to it in the negative direction. Okay, so this continuous piece right here is my restricted domain. So the way we write that is it goes from negative pi over 2 to, oop, and including, I should do that, and including, to positive pi over 2. Alright, so there is the um, sine and the cosine. Um, and while I got these up, let's go ahead and do um, secant. So the secant, because that goes along with this, now I'm going to pick a different color to draw the asymptotes. Okay. So the secant, okay, there's this piece right here and this piece right there. So the secant has the same restricted domain, except you can see where there's a place right here at 
pi over 2 where the secant does not exist okay? because there is an asymptote there. So we get from 0 up, up to but not including pi over 2 and from pi over 2 but not including it up to but including pi. Okay? So that's the secant. Now let's do the cosecant likewise. Cosecant. Cosecant. I can just draw that in right there. Let's pick a different color for our asymptote here. Okay. <coughs> and its domain. Well, we're going to go from negative pi over 2 up 2 but not including 0 because there's an asymptote there. Let me jump over here. And from 0, not including it, up to pi over 2. So you see how those two are similar, the cosecant and secant, similar with the sine and the cosine. Alright, now let's do tangent. All right, so the tangent function So, tangent function, it's positive in 1, and it's positive in 3, it's negative in 2, negative in 4. So, if you were designing the math world, you could make a case for it going from quadrant 1 all the way to quadrant 2, like the cosine, right? Or you could make a case for it including quadrant 1 to quadrant 4, like the sine. Uh, I could see you make an argument for either way. The convention is um, to adopt it for quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. Kay. And when I graph this out, tangent goes to 0. asymptotes, negative pi over 2, positive pi over 2. So here's my quadrant 1 values where the sine is positive right there. And my quadrant 2, I'm sorry, my quadrant 4 values, well again we're going to get to that in the negative direction and that's that piece down there. So to write out our domain, restricted domain of the tangent, we go from negative pi over 2 up to positive pi over 2, but we can't include both of those because we have asymptotes there. So I'm not going to put that uh, less than or equal to or greater than or equal to symbol. I'm just going to put greater than and less than equal to. Alright, so there's your tangent. And the cotangent Let's look at that a minute. Cotangent. All right, so the cotangent, you could make a case for it being like the cosine, or being like the sine, or being like the tangent. You could make a case either way. So the convention is it's going to go from 1 and through quadrant 2. So we're going to go from 0 to pi. I'm just going to sketch that in right there. That's what it would look like. And I've got an asymptote here. And I've got an asymptote over here. So then we would write that. Let's see, we're going to go from 0, not including 0, up to pi not including pi because we have asymptotes. Now, let me put a little disclaimer on here. And uh, the disclaimer is that not all textbooks agree on this. If you've had tr uh, trig in the past, you may have had a different restrictive domain for cotangent. But this is the one that our book is going to use, our text is going to use. 
All right, so that's the lesson on restricting domains.